a sense from uh, from Benny Sports. It's a good pick. They're comfortable in playing it. Maybe uh, it's interesting they prefer Lance over Grace because they played fantastically well with Grace last game. And maybe they just don't want to play with it again. I would I would hope that Divine World do actually pick up Grace for themselves now. This is the first pick because they saw how strong it was against them. So now they, they could play it uh, for themselves. And then they, obviously they could go for maybe the Arden if they'd rather that. But I, I really or maybe Blackfeather, but I really think that Grace is the smart pick for Divine Aurora here. Yep, Grace can be a possible pickup for Divine Aurora, but just look at history itself. They don't quite have the habit of going for Grace. They like their Arden, they like the Catherine. We do see a Black Feather, like you say, being picked up by the side of Diva. Black Feather, Jenny will do very well against Majors. What what Divine Aurora really wants to ban up now, probably not the not the petal probably just ban up the glaive like they did in the previous game you know but black feather just does well against a, a lot of matter matter carries at this point it's a weapon carries at least even the majors like you mentioned uh very very early on yeah i definitely think that if they don't want to pick their captain now maybe they as you said they like oh. Arden, so that it's unlikely that they're going to be denied their favorite captain and the oh the ban of sky sky obviously didn't work at all really in the last game let's be honest and that sky band could imply they want to pick cruel which would be unlikely with because that means they have to go for black feather cp lane or they go double weapon and then they have triple melee which means rhyme's fantastic against you and rhyme is in the meta quite in quite a strong position at the moment so that sky band doesn't seem to make that much sense maybe it'll uh be obvious later on in the draft why they've gone for that obviously arden would be the a, 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 Completely fine pick, not a great pick for Divine Aurora, but it's a comfort pick. They played it last game uh, pretty well, despite the fact they lost, but it's definitely good for them. And now, Brenny Sports have got pretty much whatever they want besides their Idris. They can't go for their Idris comp. They could still go Weapon Petal Lane this time, and perhaps a, uh, a Jungle Rhyme, because you know Sky's off the fold, and Rhyme is very good against most heroes, even against the Mages. If you have someone like a Weapon Petal who can just jump in, and um, I think that could work, but obviously Samuel is another 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 okay pick for Brenny Sports. It's whichever, whatever they're comfortable on in the jungle, uh, along with a weapon laner such as Pestle or maybe Kestrel. Yep, definitely. So for the side of Brenny Sports, like you say, they have got a wide variety of heroes that you know they can pick up. The go-to would definitely be that of Scarf to just to deny, but we are going to see a Batiz being picked up for the side of Brand Esports. I guess it is just to ordain down either the Arden or the uh, Black Feather, or just forcing Black Feather to just burn one Rose defensive to get out of the ordained. But all in all, I don't think Batiz is a quality pickup for uh, Brand Esports. They have got mm -hmm. so much more. But the amount of CCs, however, we cannot deny the CCs that's going to be coming out from the entirety of Brand Esports. For the final pickup, at least, a, a good weapon carry can be anything at this point in time. Rhyme is definitely out of the table, out of the mm -hmm. question at least. No, I think it could be a Weapon Batiste. Weapon Batiste did get a buff in 2.7 actually. Uh, uh, no, it's going to be a CP. Baron's very interesting. I think um, that they're going they're going for the Protector Baron comp. It could work quite well. Only problem with that is you're countered by Blackfeather and that is the exact hero Divine Aurora yeah. first picked because uh -huh. he can just block his the Githian wall with Rose Offensive block the ordained with another one crucible for some shade he blocks himself um what is it uh impale and then your baron's dead he gets he gets uh, killed by black feather and by tacker so i really like oh, wow. they have so much dive there's not enough um like crowd cc there's a lot of individual cc from batiste and lance generally i know his abilities are skill shot but you normally only hit one hero with them if, if you get two people with the Githian wall that's that's op that's you're going to win that fight most likely. So I really like what Divine Aurora have got. I think it will be quite easy for them to dive this uh, Baron. And they're most likely going to do that before Baron hits his late game power spike as well. Yep. In the previous game as well, we realized that Divine Aurora really enjoys just picking up heroes that can go into the back lines. And Baron is one of those heroes that I was least expecting to see. He has been phased out of the meta for like two patches right now. Uh, I'm quite interested to see how Brandy Sports would actually kick this Baron off and whether or not Baron would be the matter pickup. I'm definitely not going to be seeing a weapon Batiste, but all in all, I guess, I guess, you know, like you mentioned, a lot of single target CCs, not enough um, 
not enough, um, what is that called, a group target uh, CCs, unless, mm -hmm. you know, Batiste lands a threesome shade, that would be good. But even, you know, for a dive that would be good. I agree. A three man face and shade would be good. Definitely. So, but and even then, you know, Tarka can easily kite over that and then follow up by an that strip so, or a basic attack, and your Baron can just go down really, really quickly. And with the aggression coming out from Divine Aurora, we saw in a previous game as well, Neon C just a very, very um, aggressive hero, aggressive player in all together, will definitely have the upper hand in this current draft. Yeah, there's there's two blocks as you said. There's there's a chitin for Taka, which will block a lot of C, block some CC, and we said two black for the ultimate charges can also block CC. So it's really risky. I think when esports are going to have to play this uh, better than they played the last game if they want to come home with a two 0 victory, because yeah, they, they, if if they get to late game and Divine Aura do not pressure at level six, Idris Taka has a really good power spike. They have so much uh, stickiness, but Idris um, Black Feather, not Idris Taka, no. Bleh. Taka Blackfeather has a really good pass back at level six because they have um, because they have their ultimates. They can just stick onto a target, and I, I think uh, if if Dorano do not see not not see do not pressure correctly and effectively early on, then Baron will obviously scale up, and it will get extremely hard for this Baron to uh, to to be to face against. Yep, definitely. So we do see um, Taka just going for the double weapon blade that we've been talking about. So hopefully Spitfire can fully utilize this double weapon blade like Chingy did when he just, you know, went on the Taka, just putting a lot of insane pressure onto, you know, the other team. Because what Taka can do at this point in time, he definitely, the side of... Um, Divine Aurora, Diva definitely have got a better early game team comp, much more aggressive, much more power as compared to that of Brand Esports. But Brand Esports, we saw just now, they are so good with just, you know, farming up and then putting out a lot of damage in no time. So that is one thing that Brand Esports and both Divine Aurora and Brand Esports definitely excels in. But all in all, I guess if Spitfire do not fully use like this double weapon play, then it's not at all um, economical. Yeah, maybe we'll be seeing attention though after shock on the attacker instead of going for full crystal power, which would mean that the weapon blades aren't wasted too much. But we're just going to have to wait and see what Spitfire does decide to go for. I think it could work well, especially against the because Baron's not going to build defense early on. And so going for the on hit attacker, you force him to either build defense against you and have uh, much less damage, or he, if he doesn't build any defense, then you're just going to be you're just going to be stuck and you're going to completely burst him down. Yep, there was one thing that I want to talk about, uh, to, uh, say um, earlier on, but I thought it was just really, really ridiculous. I mean, I thought it would be a... Uh, spell Sword Taka. Yep, there you go. Yeah, Spell Sword yeah. <laughs> It's not that ridiculous. That's reasonably reasonably fair. So spell Sword is an underused item. I think we can both agree. Yeah. Spell Sword is not used as much as it possibly could be. It's picked up pretty pretty exclusively on Glaive at the moment, just for that cooldown. Nice. Guess again, he's just flexing his uh, his impale, showing that yeah, I can I can hit to impale on two members if I need to in a team fight if I if I decide to try it. And Taka is rooted by the Elder Tree, but Sync One is with is by himself actually. Not he's right now. Now so is Guessing X. Bounds left in eight, and Trey will be secured by Taka probably. Yes, yeah, so Taka's going to go in very aggressive with that healing buff, but he's actually going one versus two. Imagine is not with him, but he's going to sneaky around, trying to go on Sync 1, and they are going to keep fighting. They're not going to stop. That's an empowerment on Sync 1, so lots of damage on that ordained, but not an empowered bad mojo from Sync 1, so he is possibly going to fall here and miss the mojo. Now, nice double shot. If I tried to dodge it, but the target was not him, the target was Margin. Another empowered by Begessing it, and now Mr. Um, Spitfire is going to have to run away. Margin is going to try and run. But he will not survive. Mr. Jim with a great rotation. Yonsei is going to stop that port from guessing X. But Bren Esports are slightly ahead early game. It's not what you expected. Spitfire going to try and go in. But what was that, Spitfire? That was suicidal. Now, Yonsei unable to secure the tree. And he's just going to have to run away. And he's going to stop guessing <laughs> X's port once again. Just for a bit of fun. But he did lose a CS in lane for it. So, you know, may maybe that wasn't worth it. But Bren Esports are ahead in the early game. Definitely, and once again, we are going to see Mr. Chim just taking the bags and the entirety of the jungle as payment for missing out the lane, um, a couple of CS from lane, but in, in actual fact, not a lot. Um, he has got a big wave that's pushing towards him, but all in all, I guess it is fine. After all, Baron requires a lot of farm, a lot of items to work 
very, very efficiently and put out a lot of damage. And one more thing as well, imagine if Baron actually ran for CP. CP Baron and... Imagine! Yes, they, they would imagine. lose the game, Luxuria, if he went. Uh, right, right, fine. There you go. But but I mean, I mean, you know, CP Baron, I, I, he has got very, very good scaling. You know, don't get me wrong. He has got very good scaling on his abilities. It's just that he do not have the legendary talent that he will have. It's <laughs> all, you know, better royal. Try on cannon. Yeah, yeah that, there that's, you that's go. It looks like Devon and are going to be backing off. Yeah, they're, they've actually managed to turn it around. They're now no longer behind in gold. They're actually back to even. So that's really good. Spike went on getting the first two kills. And actually, it could be risky. And yeah. Nunzi wants to go and get the back to attacker to try and help him get a bit more gold. But the wave was far too pushed by Baron, so that's not possible. And he is going to farm up effectively. And Baron is slowly going to walk to the backs with Sync 1. So yeah, both teams, again, being very defensive. This is very common in SCA. We're seeing not a lot of aggression going on. Uh, some, maybe someone gets a slight head start, but teams want to wait till level 6 power spikes, wait till level 8 power spikes until they really try and do a proper team fight. Yep, we do see though, uh -huh, Taka going in. Yeah, Taka's gonna go up against the Baron, the Mortal Wound does land, but Taka... Um, or Wall of the Ordained, he's gonna get stunned up. Double shot will not do quite enough thanks to the healing class. Sink one going very low, but so is Taka. He's even lower. He's gonna try and spot a Spitfire, but he does manage to get the kill on to uh, Sink one, but the return is on Spitfire now. Mr. Jim trying to do the work on this Baron. His jump death has not got the energy for double for Black Feather. He will not be able to get the triple, most likely. He's very low. Has got the Serpent's Master though, so he'll be able to sustain a little bit. Uh, trying to kill Guessing X, but he's got an impel, does land, one basic, nope, a lovely on point for Black Feather, Guessing X forced the boots away, and uh, the wave is pushed in for in Leontie's favour, so that means that uh, Mr. Jim is going to lose quite a bit of CS, and a nice fight in the end for Divine Aurora, and we're going to yep. see a storm crown first tackle, not tension bar after shot. Yep, you know, earlier on there were some no-win spells, so what is actually weak? into the game a lot of people have been talking about how about you build a cp taka but instead of um stomp crown you go for that um spell, spell sword. sword yeah, yeah. that does make sense it, it does a very similar job it helps you clear, it helps you clear farm and it's a basic attack damage on enemy heroes and on farm so i do understand that that idea but spell sword gives you a <laughs> bit um a bit more cooldown but I think it gives you less damage on heroes, if they, especially if they build weapon defense, because um, Stormcrown is true damage, so you really cannot, you just can't build against that, you can't defend against it. And Mr. Jim, gonna jump up to the lane, try and clear his waves, but Fire has got the ultimate, so has Nyonsi now. This is a good time for the fight, and Sig one massively out of position, he's gonna boots away, but Spitfire is going to fight and over, trying as much damage as he can. Impel does not connect from Guessing X onto Spitfire, and now Nyonsi has got two ult charges still left, so Divine Aura could fight if they want to, Guessing X is going to be the one taking most of the damage. Nice Gideon Wolf put onto the on seat, and they're going to back off. Yeah, Divine Aura were in a bad position, because if they backed off, they backed off towards Sentry. So they're just going to go um, the long way through the jungle shop, pick up some items, and then rotate to lane. You're definitely very, very flexible coming up from the side of Bren. Um, Divine Aurora, Nyonsi was playing on that weapon, or rather jungler role then. And this time we saw VC, we are seeing Nyonsi actually up in lane. And I must say, CS wise, all in all, it's run relatively even. We have Baron definitely um, up on um, 10 or 14 CS um, over Nyonsi. And the only reason is because of the hyper farming that is happening. But it will definitely affect Sync 1 because, I mean, the clockwork and the shatter glass not exactly very cheap items to pick up on sync one and generally for a batiz you want to just put on a lot of pressure after you get your shatter glass because that is your first power spike and on top of that as well you know if you are gonna just hyper farm your baron what happens then is with the reduction in this current patch to well, the damage. Damage. he has got over him and jump jets but did not use it to walk through the gauntlet wall if i was gonna get stunned by the end wall no he's gonna get feared through oh, so much oh, that's a touch of shade oh, and it is good from sync one that's an ace for bren so much damage just came all at the same time i feel yeah. What was ah? Uh, I can't. I mean, Mr. Jim was basically clinging on to the life support of his teammates. 
Is that I'm <laughs> speechless is the word, like Shirley, yeah. I'm truly speechless. Definitely very well played coming out from Brand Esports right there. The free some shade was definitely what that saved Mr. Jim's bum bum um, in that team fight right there. I must, I must, I must, let, let's all agree on that. Mr. Jim was only saved because of the very critical um, Githin wall on top of that as well. The threesome shade, or rather the, the three men fearsome shade that came out. I'm going to go in on to sink one. He's going to get hit by the ordained wall. And the fearsome shade is not up for another 13. I highly doubt when they're going to look to fight right now. Split fight, yeah, they're going to back off. So just a little bit of poke from both sides. Yeah, just just a little poke in exchange. And I, I really thought that you know Divine Aurora would have come came up, you know, came out in the team fight. But after all, they just dove a little too deep onto turret. Um, Neon C take uh, spit fire took a little too many too many turret mm. shots. And on top of that as well, it, it's just the ion cannon, fearsome shade combination, and the three man Githin ball as well. That was just spectacular. I must say, speechless is not really the word. I was just in utter awe. Mm. Yeah, awesome. Definitely filling up to his word there. But that is a face check. Very bad face check for Margin. Going to get stunned up and going to get killed. One man for some shade. On. He's going to get the double shot. There, Spitfire's like, you know what? I'm going to go in. Why? Just do an expert two. Bit of damage. And he's going to get hit by the ordained. Whoa, Spitfire could be in trouble. That's a shot from Baron. That's a stun. That is another kill for Sync 1. 5 and 1 on this Batiste. Playing out of his mind. <laughs> The, the team comp coming out from uh, Brandy as well is definitely coming together at this point in time. Baron, I think it was Brandy Sport or Mr. Jim actually that came out with the um, Serpent's Mask in the Tension Bow Tyrant's Monaco build or some sort like that. But this time they are actually opting for the build that was um, highest damage in terms of output um, in 2.6. And it's working very, very well uh, for them. And a lot of CCs as well. Basically, they. Although it's just one man CCs throughout, but they are able to just, you know, lock down the one that is dealing the most damage. And I think the majority of the team fight was a lot of mistakes coming out from Divine Aurora as well. What happened a lot of times is they just try to go in for a 1v3, uh, you know, and, and 2v3 just being caught out of position. And I think that is why, you know, their, their team comp is just relatively um, that way because they are dying. Put the damage onto getting it's basically negligible from Spitfire. He's going to exactly onto Mr. Shim, but he's just not doing enough, and that's going to be a nice block from Black Feather. And he does trade his life for Baron, so this is really good for Divine Aurora. Baron did fall and just eventually. Nice exactly, but there's just no damage from Spitfire. He's getting bursted by these bad, bad, bad mojos. That's two uh, empowered mojos for Sick One. He's going to be get Spitfire. Actually, a lovely expert to dodge out the final bad mojo that would have secured his life. And this is the problem with Stormcloud Attacker is you just don't deal that much. You're reliant on your Black Feather. And now Divine Aurora, they're in one, they're split. And they managed to dodge out the bad oh. mojo. That's like one is in a bad position. He tries to get Margin. Margin's like, nap. Nah, I've got a Black Feather. What are you going to do? Attack it, exit to win. He's going to try and kite it over the wall of the Ordain. But wow. we've the power. 400 damage. There's going to be a kill for some shade. Not quite enough to stop Nyonzi. But here's Mr. Jim. If your Black Feather spawned, so has our Baron. And now Divine Aurora. A little bit too aggressive, trying to get the kill on the stick bomb. Yep, definitely a little too aggressive and just not very Well, that's a very greedy port for Margin, but there's a sentry, so he will be able to get home now. And actually, stopping Margin port at home does make an easy turret for Mr. Jim. And actually, guessing X could be in trouble. Is he going to try and give the minions to Mr. Jim? No, they're going to back off smartly, not trying to get themselves caught out too aggressive. Definitely not very calculated coming up from Divine Aurora there. Just going in, you know, head first and, and not being, you know, very constructive in their, in, in their, what is that called? In their aggression and of course team fights as well. They, they have a lot of potential because we mentioned before, you know, the fight, the, the, the match even started is that they definitely have a potential to just burst on a single target. Speaking of burst, they're going to try and burst damage in the gauntlet. Was stopped by the wall, and so that was not quite where Margin. Self alive. Nyonsi. Too far. The Impale does land onto Nyonsi, and that's a bit far. He's going to try and run away, and yeah, that was a bit of a wasted gauntlet by uh, by Margin. Yeah, like I said, gassing is still on the chase. Nyonsi stand up by Kitten Wall. Yeah, they're not going to finish quite yet. Actually, that's very bad. Century, but that's one basic for Mr. Jim and Divine. We'll back off. 
One more double shot would possibly kill them both. They have tier 2 defense on Margin and Spitfire and tier 3 on Leonsi. It just doesn't seem to be doing anything. Baron, with 13 and a half minutes in and he's already got four completed items. Look at the hyper farm on Mr. Jim. 172, sync one on 14 CS. Uh, Margin has almost overtaken him on CS as the captain. And there's going to be Baron doing the work onto Margin. The block does come out onto the Ordain. So Margin's going to be able to get away. But Neonsi could be in trouble now. It's 522 on an Empowered Bad Mojo. Uh, Echo was used by Guessing X. So that's not available for Gifty Moore. He misses the Impale. But he will not miss the Gifty Moore. Stun on Spitfire. Explosive was feared out by Sync one He dodges out the um, Lily Lark's Gifty Moore. Now Neonsi is going to be ordained. He's going to block. But will he be able to stop, stop the double shot? No. Spitfire dodges the Impale. So he does not get booted by the trip. He will make a double stun by the Gifty and Wall. Margin is going to be dead, and Neon sees like, nah, I've had enough of this, I'm pointing home. Red Esports just looking like they can take this game pretty comfortably. Yup, they can definitely, unless Neon C has something to say about this, but 552 damage on that anchor turret, and Neon C just have to just be a good boy and turtle up. <laughs> I mean, there is really nothing he can do at this point in time. He can choose to roll offensive in. He has got one charge on. The next charge will be coming online really, really soon. But that will risk him getting ordained, get some shade away, and just get busted down by Mr. Jim on that Baron. I take that back. Baron may see. see he doesn't better. care. He's going for it. He's going to go in, but that's going to be a second kill. On triple get the wall by guessing it. Gauntlet does come down. Bit some changes actually in the wrong direction. The sick one's most likely going to fall here. And he will to the black feather. Black feather paints apart. Executes him. Now uh, there's an impale and a double stun. This um, guessing X is playing out of his mind. Spitfire's going to try and run away. But sick one did actually fall. I think that was to the, to the um, black feather in the end. And Mr. Jim is very <coughs> low. So he's going to be forced to port home. Guessing X trying to 1v1 tacker. I don't think anything's going to come of this. Spitfire's just going to kite it over him, just run away. And actually, yeah, that's a nice dodge. Um, he's going for next level prediction. Oh! He's find out tacker. But now Spitfire able to get away and not going to die. Mr. Jim, though, he sold his block and he's gone, yeah, I need bumps from slumbering husk. Otherwise, I'm going to fall to the same fate as Sync 1 did in the last fight. But yeah, but, uh, Mr. Jim just wants a bit more CS. He wants all the CS, 195 already. I, I think the later in this, into this game it goes, the more in favour of Bren Esports it will be, despite the fact that Divine Aurora are starting to turn around this fight. Spitfire's now picked up a Shatter Glass, got some actual damage as opposed to just uh, Storm Ground. And now he's going to possibly be caught out by the Impel. Yes, he will get the wall. He does not block. He misses the block on both Githia walls. But the Vanguard is enough, as is the Fountain. Spitfire is now alive. Mr. Jim, there's the arm kind of going to come down. And it will land on Spitfire. Whoa. 417. Spitfire hasn't got any defense, so he's going to die so quickly to that Crystal Power damage from Sync 1 and the Crystal Power damage from the Iron Cannon. This is an easy Kraken for Bren Esports. They're just going to take this and try and push for the win. Wow, brand new spots, and and I guess that is the reason Lance was banned out against them. We saw how incredible gassing is on this Lance margin, though. Nah. Yeah, that's gonna be margin. He's gonna go on over the. Aye, but he is going to leave his black feather to fend for himself. He's doing really well with the surface blast. Will it be enough? Yes, it will. He gets the shutdown trade. Neonsi with the play. Serpent's mask breaking point and um, full metal jacket just making it so that Baron does so much damage, but Neonsi does similar because Baron hasn't got any defense. So Neonsi manages to stop the Kraken being taken and trade his life, get the shutdown on Baron. That is massive for Divine Aurora if they can do that in a team fight. Yep, I mean, Neonzi is the only answer at this point in time. He'll definitely be building into a tension bow, which we see very often in Southeast Asia, if not then Bonesaw. But Bonesaw will be very, very least likely. With that tension bow pickup, definitely Neonzi can just stand comfortably, head to head, toe to toe against that of Mr. Jim. And that is the problem with Baron, and players really have to realize that. With the amount of, you know, items on Baron, you would think that Baron would just. just burst down Neon C in a snap of fingers, but that is not the case whatsoever with your you know, with your health barrier you get from your from your on point if you want to used by margin very defensively so this is Brenny Sports by or take sentry. War are now on cooldown. So yeah, that was a bit of a waste by margin and this could leave uh, 
Nice scout trap placement actually by Margin, just by that elder treant, so by the mid treant, so that they know where Brenny spots are, where they're rotating. Black Feather now has got the tension bow. He did pick up a little bit of Spitfire's farm just to help him get that. Now there's Mr. Jim in the bush, just waiting. There's a one stun on the Githin wall. He's going to go for an echo. He actually does not get the ulti. Oh! Mr. Jim out the corner. That's Mr. J does. Spitfire. Now Deontay's going on to sink one. That's not the target you want. He's got to focus the Baron. Deontay's going to fall to the Baron and be able to focus him. Why are they focusing sink one? I will never know. But that will most likely be an ace for Bren if they can carry on like this. That's Mr. Jim doing the work. Spitfire's exposed. He hasn't got a Titan um, or Kaku anymore, I should say. And now Mr. Jim going to try and chase him down. He hasn't got the speed. He is Baron. And now that's a nice dodge by, um, by Spitfire. He's going to be able to run. But he's not going to be able to hide. Uh, no, he will be able to run away and port home. Mr. Jim's gonna, just going to get the Kraken now because Tack is able to get to their jungle. So that was a very poor fight from uh, Divine Aurora. But this will be a free Kraken for Ben Chong. Yep, I mean, their entirety, their entire thing should really just be on, you know, tunnel vision into Mr. Jim, remove him from the team fight. But what happened then, like you mentioned earlier on, Sync 1 was the main target and that was the wrong target. If they actually did open a scoreboard, then they would know that Sync 1 has only got 22 CS. Whoa, what is Nyonzi doing? Taku is in the enemy back, taking that. Nyonzi and Mar Delves and Renshaw know they've been sent to And Margin's gonna go away, he's gonna block up the fist and get the goal down. One assist sent elimination will not win them this game. They need to defend this Kraken and that will be Margin falling. Spitfire not with the smartest decision making going for that crystal sent elimination. And now uh, Brenchok do not need their Kraken. They've got a minion wave. They're going to go into the turret. 565. Crit with that tension mode box. Down to only 400. Uh, only on the turret by Mr. Jim. And he's still got his slumbering husk available. Margin will not be up to defend this Kraken. It's down to Beyonce and Spitfire by themselves. Spitfire's going in. x red Mr. Jim taking a lot of damage. Husk is still not popping onto. Here we go. There's the first one defensive. He's going to be feared out. Does not block it. And he's going to get stunned. And that's getting it. With the play. Spitfire dies. Brandy Sports take the game. Two to nil. Brandy Sports with that mic drop in the end. Really, really good play coming out from Brandy Sports. But of course, a Gideon wall onto margin to just. I don't know. End the game. <laughs> I guess, but all in all, very well played coming out from Brand Esports. I was not expecting such performance whatsoever. We see on Spitfire 101, 0, 8, and 4. Although he is the Taka, he could have just put out so much more damage had he just capitalized on those, the, the two weapon blades that he picked up. But like I said earlier on, Divine Aurora do not have the best early game aggression. Yeah, I think because there's no defense picked up by Baron, like, ever, he almost always goes for either just a block or a slumbering husk. There's no need to build Stormcrown because there's you're not you don't need to worry about defense. Stormcrown does true damage, which pierces through all defense, but there's no point in that when Baron hasn't got any. So Taka just does negligible damage, as you said, 0 and 8 at the end of the game. So Taka should have gone either Aftershock uh, Broken Myth or just Shatterglass Broken Myth. I think Shatterglass Myth would have been a fantastic build for Spitfire, would have bursted down Baron really easily, and it wouldn't 